And we've got a, a strange hit evening because we're enormously grateful to Andrew Mitchell, the um, shadow uh, minister for development and the MP for Sutton Coffee, who's got to go off to all sorts of other things, but very, very kindly agreed to fit us in in a really busy schedule. And I really just wanted to give him, at this very, I think, interesting and complex and delicate moment in, in, in Burma, in the history of Burma and the future of Burma, an opportunity to put forward what kind of policies you might be thinking of, what you wanted to say, and then we'll have a few questions. But he does have to leave, and we've got a car outside at 6.30, and then the evening will take another more drunken form. Uh, <laughs> but we are, we are enormously grateful, Andrew. Thank you very much. But can everyone hear me all right? Yeah. 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 Uh, thank you very much for this uh, opportunity. I uh, bit your hand off when you gave me uh, the invitation. And because I care deeply about uh, Burma, I've taken a very close interest in Burma for many years. And it seemed to me an opportunity to make a few general points about uh, conservative international policy and something specific about uh, Burma. And I see in the audience people with whom I've been working out for the last four years very directly on these issues and indeed with whom I travel to uh, Burma. Um, I fear I can't say an enormous amount about Orwell. Everything uh, I know about Orwell was gleaned from a brilliant new introduction to uh, 1984 written by Robert Harris, um, a very old friend of mine, who I thought was the most brilliant article um, uh, on uh, the amazing effect that, that uh, this author and that particular book um, has, has had. Um, and it also gives me the opportunity to say that if you are the shadow of national Development Secretary, and you're focusing in studying uh, these things, you realize the incredible importance of uh, radio and journalism, free journalism, the work that is done by journalists of trying to train journalists in the developing world so that they can hold politicians to account. It's an absolutely fundamental aspect of building civic society, which is so important in the developing world, enabling people to hold their politicians to account. Um, how do you do that? You must have free institutions, the sinews of a free society, whether it's property rights, uh, laws of contract, independent judiciary, um, and a free um, press. So that's the second reason why I've got to come. Now, um, there's a broad consensus about development uh, across the world. Now, it used to be that the left thought if you put some more money on the table, you would be able to resolve poverty, and there was a sort of equation, a matrix there, with the more the money, the less the poverty. And the right to think there was no point in spending money on development or more investment squirreled away in offshore and Swiss uh, bank accounts. The, there is now an emerging consensus that uh, although the conservative view is not the same as the view, there are great points of similarity. And our view is this, that the key thing that condemns people to remain poor is conflict dysfunctional societies. The key thing that lifts them out of uh, poverty, helps them out of poverty, is wealth creation, and that aid when spent properly can achieve miracles. And I'm enormously proud that uh, my party, I'm David Cameron, has made it clear that we will ring fence the aid uh, budget and that we will advance towards the 0.7 uh, commitment of GNI by 2013. And I mention these three points because conflict is the first <coughs> most important of these. And I have traveled um, trying to understand what stops conflicts from starting, once they start, how you stop them, and how you reconcile people once you once the conflict is over. And that's taken me to Rwanda, it's taken me to Darfur, uh, Eritrea, and uh, Ethiopia, and to Chad to look at the way the terrible conflict in Darfur, um, more quiescent now, uh, has internationalized itself across uh, other uh, borders. But it also took me to uh, Burma. I was at the time the only um, I think British politician who had been into uh, Burma. I had an unforgettable meeting with the uh, foreign minister uh, there, which I hope he went up again. Because I think you can then hear what those of us um, in the free world uh, think uh, about the regime that's operating there, the wicked and evil junta that's operating there. And now, um, I, I was able to meet these uncles from the NLD. Uh, I was able to meet some of the brilliant students from the class of 88, um, who uh, many of them are now in jail uh, since my visit um, uh, and are locked up. Um, and I visited a refugee camp on the border between Thailand and uh, Burma, 
the most appalling political I've ever seen. It is the only time in my life I have felt an almost uncontrollable urge to uh, scream in fury at what I saw and witnessed. I could not believe that the international community would allow people to exist in these terrible circumstances on the uh, Thai uh, Burmese uh, border. Now, what should we do about this? Let me make a few micro points and then let me make a, 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 a macro. And the first uh, thing that we should recognize is the role of the Chinese. And we shouldn't be too negative about this. Uh, at the time of the cyclone in the Irrawaddy, uh, the only game that were made, the only time we were able to persuade the Burmese to uh, allow in uh, external support uh, was through the Chinese. And the brilliant Chinese ambassador in, uh, in London, whom I go and see regularly in lobby on well, the first time I went to see her, she had me for breakfast, but I arrived with stronger arguments on subsequent occasions. Chinese don't like disorder. The, the key thing about the Chinese uh, attitude to Burma is that it is disorder which threatens them. And uh, I think they understand increasingly that, that Burma has got to change, or the very disorder they fear is going to, to afflict them. So I think. Uh, continuing a dialogue with the Chinese, not indulging in megaphone diplomacy, but really making it clear uh, why it's in their interest to see a more democratic regime in, in, in Burma is enormously